Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Hashtag Disruption Dialogues, a Markets and Markets podcast series for growth-minded strategy, market intelligence, and competitive intelligence professionals. And today our host Ranjal Sharma is in discussion with Viviana Vito, Head of Market Strategy and Regulatory Analysis, Global Infrastructure and Networks at NL. Hello and welcome to another episode of Disruption Dialogues. I'm Pranjal Sharma. I'm an author based in New Delhi, India. And I'm going to be in discussion with Viviana Vito. Thank you, Viviana, for joining us today. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm very glad to participate in this podcast. I think it will be good to give the view about myself and uh, what the company is doing in terms of uh, grid component. Exactly. And that's the topic of today, which is grid digitalization. Uh, we want to help everybody understand what it means. So maybe I can begin by asking you, Viviana, that there are different interpretations about the power grid, but how does power grid become digital? What is the concept behind it? I think that we are facing an incredible transformation uh, uh, due to the transition that is uh, varying from country to country. But most of the analysts uh, convene uh, that distribution grids will be at the center of this change. And in particular, in some occasions, they have defined the backbone of the transition because it's uh, a key element bringing into the system a lot of renewables that will be smaller in size uh, and uh, also electric vehicle. Uh, how the grid will respond to that uh, incredible change. So, for our way to interpret it, uh, we uh, call it the grid futurability because we think that the combination, the grid transformation in terms of digital. Uh, components uh, to be included in the network uh, uh, as to be combined with the external uh, environment. So we think that the three aspects uh, that uh, the grid has to face are to be more resilient, because need to provide reliable services more and more in terms of quality and continuity, and being the future stakeholder uh, more dependent on electricity, and climate change bringing on the table uh, extreme operating condition uh, in a wider way. And the second point is that uh, the uh, network uh, should be more inclusive and participatory. It's because the interconnection in between the network uh, and all the actors of the sector is uh, higher. And the innovation uh, is key and essential how to these two components should kick each other. And the third point is that about sustainable. Uh, this because the network should include more renewable, so as to be an Austin capacity that uh, his high and high and his respect, but also itself should be a CO2 absorber. So should be capable to transform itself in a smarter grid uh, that brings a value that's optimal in terms of a reduction on CO2 emission and on circularity. Well, you know, there is, there is a lot of good objectives for uh, digitalizing the grid. But can you help us understand what is the use of technologies like artificial intelligence, IoT, you're looking at edge computing, of course there is cyber security for, for grid management. So what is, why do you need artificial intelligence, why do you need IoT for the grid? I think all these uh, technology could uh, bring to the entire already in our model, in our platform model, supporting the network to improve the capability of grid management itself because the amount of data that will be exchanged in between the network and the system that is around the network is increasing a lot and this implies also capability to use this data to best performance for the network so improving kpi so you can have different modality of uh, utilize all, uh, all this that uh, goes from uh, workforce efficiency because uh, the network has the peculiarity to be very local and very extended on the territory and you can utilize artificial intelligence to optimize your workforce so to be more efficient you can utilize these to uh, uh, request management uh, of customers in a way to engage the customer more and more and you can utilize also the capability of edge computing also to combine the different equipment, uh, enabling them to uh, be in a, in a, in a uh, revolutionary mo- modality uh, to speak each other, in order that each device will be not single vertical user, but uh, the combination of all devices can optimize the, the use of the networks. Viviana, you talked about decarbonization and the sustainability. Can you give an example to to show why 
the digitalization will help in the decarbonization and reduce the carbon footprint and make it far more environment friendly. I think I can give one example that how you can manage data that is about smart meter. We have been front run in that respect, utilizing smart meter since the very beginning of our management of the network. And we consider ourselves a major, let's say, a leader in this respect. Uh, we have nowadays more than 44 million active mass meters on our network in several countries. And the use of smart meter is for sure the best practice uh, in how you can manage showing and performing a real uh, time balance of your energy in the network. Uh, losses, uh, inspection, uh, and also energy management also of your customer. Uh, and this implies a better efficiency uh, in the use of energy. And this is a first, uh, uh, let's say, way in how this can be an instrument, a technology uh, to support also a sustainable goal. On the other side, in itself, uh, we implement uh, since the design phase uh, in an appliance like Smart Meter, the capability to be a CO2 absorber uh, utilizing recycled plastic, for example, for the chassis of the Smart Meter. This is an example we have also other part of the network uh, in which we try always to for the design from the design phase uh, to transform the asset in itself in an CO2 absorber. And so this is a contribution that you can give to the decarbonization path uh, together with uh, the capability of the network to be more technological uh, ready for the transformation uh, that is given by the transition more and more. There is a big uh, effort uh, involved in this, uh, Viviana, because the old grids have to adopt new technologies. Uh, they have to change their processes, their systems. Maybe they even have to train some of the people if you're looking at utilities or power generation companies. So which means there is a cost to it. Um, so the question then is, uh, what are the business models around this? How do you, how do you make a business case for investing in technology for grid management. What are the arguments for it? I think there is a big opportunity because it's clear that uh, the cost for network uh, will increase. This is a given because the amount of uh, uh, investment that will be needed, uh, not just on the digitalization side, but in general terms, due to the expansion of more electrification and due to the functionality and efficiency is there. But I think that the digital technology can support exactly in two respects. First of all, is in driving efficiency <laughs> in order to optimize this level of investment you know, and demonstrating on the other side, for example, to the better use of data, how the system will be beneficial in general terms. So in the end, the energy sector will be benefiting and you can always demonstrate with a CBA analysis, a cost-benefit analysis, whenever you implement a digital transformation in the network. And so toward the regulator, uh, managing all that in the best way, I think can be useful to shape at the best the tariff scheme. Because in the end, there are a lot of levies still in the tariff, a lot of things that probably a subsidy can be transposed to other parts on a fiscal side, while dedicated tariffs should be used for the best, let's say, also uh, community outcome that you can have also from digital investment. And it's about your people, but also other people that are working for the network and are benefiting also about these digital trips, let's say, that also can give them a better job. And also the cost for the consumer, whether it's a business consumer or a uh, individual consumer, will that have an impact on the price of electricity also and the power? I think that in general terms, the whole bill of uh, the consumer in consideration of, for example, the switching from sector like mobility could be beneficial, no? because in the end, uh, the, the, the entire bill of a family can be, is depending on country by country, on the intensity of user electricity that is done. But I think that there are some fundamental layers of the digitization, like the smart meter, that have been proving uh, their uh, beneficial uh, in terms also of uh, efficiency and so can absorb, let's say, the upfront cost of investments uh, in a medium-long uh, time in order to obtain other type of uh, 
benefit for the consumer. So I think that this equation has been demonstrated for the technology implemented in a massive way, uh, like my method, and can be demonstrated also for the other technology that are upcoming. Viviana, tell us something about what you are doing and what NL is doing in this area, because we've discussed the larger ecosystem and the policy and the business models, but what is the forward-looking plans and projects that uh, NL has right now, which you are involved in also? I think that we have more and more attention on the network side nowadays. In general speaking, as a company, we put a lot of effort uh, in the green, let's say, area and we have been for years front runner on that, uh, committing ourselves for green energy. And I think that uh, also we more and more are allocating part of our investment also on the side of the network. The latest plan that we have released to the November 2021 Capital Market Day demonstrate that uh, we dedicate uh, a large portion of our capex uh, in the network and the, the pillars uh, are exactly what we were referring to that's also under the uh, commitments of the green futurability path so we want to allocate money on quality and resilience we want to allocate a lot of money on digitalization and also on consumer because we think that's uh, connecting electrifying consumer is uh, a, a key, let's say, duty that we have as uh, distributors. And this is about the general distribution network, part of the jobs that I'm engaged in it. Another also initiative that I think is extremely challenging, but also key and essential for this transformation is that we launch a new subsidiary uh, that is called a grid expertise uh, that combines precisely the two components of the immense distinctive expertise we have as a grid operator and in terms of smart grid and digitalization of the network and on the other side the agility of our startups so combining these two components we bring on the table of this company all the 20 years experience about smart grids about technology that we implement in different areas different geography and also for different architecture of uh, the network because the network is a very local business and you can really defer. So this capability of doing that, we put the expertise into this company, grid expertise, and uh, we can utilize this company also for other distributors that need to bring on, on, on their parts also this smart grid, let's say, approach. One innovative project that I would like really to highlight is the, the quantum edge, the quads equipment. It is a combination uh, precisely of integrating different fu fu functionality on the secondary station in a single device. And this is again a combination of digitalization to a technology that is front edge and on the other side also to absorb it because you reduce the number of equipment in a single one. And this is an incredible uh, advantage for uh, commitment in terms of uh, affordability of uh, uh, any type of uh, uh, objective uh, in terms of uh, CO2 emission reduction. And on the other side, it's bringing on the table also a uh, valuable opportunity for uh, people that are operating uh, uh, in the network uh, in terms of their ability to be a digital workers. Viviana, the mo most important question then is where do you see the maximum change happening uh, from, from your perspective? Do you see the adoption of digitalization happening in Europe? in the Americas or in the emerging markets, do you see any pattern over there? Uh, for the country that's, uh, where we have network, I think that uh, it's clear that uh, the, the time, uh, let's say, of full implementation of the energy transition differ a little bit. So we mainly are in Europe and in Latin America, but uh, the technology sometimes can also create opportunity for leapfrog. So sometimes when the technology is advanced uh, and uh, can really demonstrate uh, to a cost-benefit analysis that is determining a, a saving for the system or more efficiency, I think that also in other geography, this path can be adopted very quickly, probably avoiding the time that we spent in the last 20 years also to let the technology evolve and adapting. And now we have more acknowledgement and more conscious about how it could work in several places and uh, plug and play somewhere else. So I think that for some appliance or for some uh, specific uh, uh, digitalization, uh, uh, this could happen also quick in other geography, even if the energy transformation, the energy transition uh, 
is not so quick, but could create a great, great incredible opportunity. There is also the impact on the uh, companies that make the, you know, products and the equipment, uh, Viviana. So, which means that uh, the electrical uh, products companies or the automotion equipment companies or anybody who is involved, they also have to change as the grid is digitalizing. Uh, where is that uh, happening? How how uh, how important is that? And uh, what is the pace of change there? I think yes. The, I think that when you do an innovation, and this is the way normally we do, uh, you need to co cooperate and collaborate for the maximum standard is possible. So more the innovation is open, more is uh, the participation of different stakeholders and more the capability to be quick. Uh, and run and to respond because we are responsible of that so these paths uh, can be created and determined. So I think that, uh, uh, again, the way to do that uh, is to uh, have all the stakeholders around the table. This is why we refer to a grid that is to be participatory because this participation is not just about customer and customer, it's about all the stakeholders. So the provider, supply chain that should be fully integrated in that, other sector that most probably, even if they are not already uh, present in this transformation could be one day, like the automotive, so it's near <laughs> by to be with us. And in order to have process and new products, uh, they can be really a combination of best practice in terms of innovation. And also, uh, really always the participation also of a regulatory body that uh, can speed up and understand the change and adapt it very quickly in the market model and uh, tariff scheme. That's a great point, you know, collaboration also means, as you said, uh, having the common standards inside the industry between various players, but also perhaps uh, in uh, different countries uh, as well, Viviana. You know, the the change and you refer to that, uh, there is electric mobility happening, but it also means that uh, there is a lot of renewable energy also coming into the grid mix. So, one of the challenges which I, I understand is that different types of energy sources have to be managed in the grid and perhaps uh, that's why the digital management of that uh, supply and demand becomes very critical. Um, but that again needs a completely new approach, isn't it? I think yeah, the approach should change drastically <laughs> from some respect because uh, if you consider that the average size uh, of uh, plants uh, that uh, uh, we have today and that it will be in uh, 2050 will be six times smaller. This means that really most of the generation uh, this worldwide will happen, as I say, will be on the network, uh, on the distribution network. And if, if you look to this uh, data on uh, the European uh, perimeter, this is even higher. It means that uh, 70 smaller power plant will be on our network very soon. And you cannot wait to 2050 to prepare yourself. You need to do this uh, adaptation nowadays and to adapt in terms of capability and hosting, as we mentioned, but also capability to be flexible together with them. Because this uh, renewable will be not just uh, smaller in size, but will be flexible, hieratic for nature, and also will be, um, in some case, uh, for electric mobility, for example, would be a resources that would have a bilateral, uh, bidirectional flow. This means that uh, the combination of network in these distributed resources should engage uh, the two components uh, in a way that uh, they can really uh, dialogue at the best. So we are working on that uh, because we think that this dialogue should happen on a more digital and automotive, uh, automation uh, possible way to do that. And uh, also in terms of market model. So there should be really a well-designed way how these two uh, components of the system should collaborate and cooperate. Well, thank you, Viviana. That's uh, very exciting to know. and. Uh... I'm sure this is uh, going to benefit not just the industry, but also all consumers of energy. And therefore, I think it has a huge impact on humanity as well. So thank you for sharing your views. And thank you to everybody for listening. I was in conversation with Viviana Vito. Thank you once again, and do join in for our next podcast. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to Hashtag Disruption Dialogues. If you are a strategy or market intelligence professional, we invite you to join our community on LinkedIn, Hashtag Disruption Dialogues.